What's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today I've got an exciting video for you today. We've got the Asus Tough A16. This is the all AMD Advantage Edition version where we've got the uh, RX 7600S, which is the RDNA 3 GPU so far uh, that we've seen so far in 2023. Uh, hopefully this thing is competitive with uh, the other major brands out there. You know, the RTX 4050, 4060, 4070. We'll see how well this stacks up against those GPUs. Most importantly, this laptop is on sale for $899. Thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring this episode. So big shout out and thank you to Best Buy. I've been a long time buyer from Best Buy. I am free to say what Ever I want to say about the products today on the live stream. All pros and cons. And Best Buy, of course, carries all of the latest electronics, including the AMD-powered Asus Tough A16, which we are unboxing and reviewing today. They did send over some cool stuff for me to check out. Logitech uh, headphones here. And then we also have the Samsung Odyssey G51C monitor, which is a 32-inch QHD monitor which is currently only $229 on Best Buy site and so uh, all of these products I believe are on sale except the headphones um, and then we also have uh, a mouse that I actually re used in recent live streams and one that I've been using for years now the Logitech G305 uh, so there's a link to each of these products in the description down below and if you want to help support me as a content creator please consider using the links if you need to buy them. Now, I do like the Logitech G305. It uses light speed technology for zero latency inputs. It does, I cannot tell there's any latency with the, the mouse. It's a very simple mouse. It's also very uh, inexpensive. We have the Logitech G305. Right now it's on sale $9 off for $41. The Logitech G435, Dolby Atmos over the ear with built-in microphone. No clue if these are any good or not. Never tried this one before, but uh, right now it's $49.99. A ton of positive reviews for this monitor, and I'm excited to check it out. Only $229, $170 off right now. It's kind of a monster sale, not gonna lie. It, currently it is in stock for ordering. Not sure how long it'll stay in stock, but uh, this would be excellent to pair with a gaming laptop. Now, I believe this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but it's a 32 inch monitor, which is quite huge. I'm very curious to see how the monitor is and we'll see how the headphones sound real quick before we continue unboxing uh, Asus Tough A16. So open up the headphones to start with. There's the headphones right there. Very lightweight, extremely lightweight actually. Oh, and there's the dongle right there. Oh, there is a cable. All right, so it's a USB-A to USB-C cable. I'm guessing this is for charging the device or maybe using it in a wired mode if you wanted to, I'm not sure if you can use it in a wired mode. It's so lightweight. That's the one nice thing about this right now. I can tell it's, ex it's extremely lightweight. I'm just wondering how durable it's gonna be because it's so lightweight. I don't know. You definitely, I would definitely treat these with care, like any, any headphones you get, you obviously wanna treat with some care. Looks like we've got a power button to turn it on. Mic mute button and volume up down buttons here on the headphones. A good range in terms of sizing. It can go up and down a lot, but I kinda wish this was a heavier duty plastic. So let's go ahead and see if I can give them a listen. I'll give you an impression of the, uh, the audio. Some pretty good overall audio quality. I do, I do like the, the headphone feel as well. Like these are very lightweight and very comfortable on my head. I do have a large head. I think this is a, my head is about as big of a head as it's gonna fit really comfortably on here. If you have a really big head, these probably won't work. Definitely sit on my head comfortably for many, many hours. Um, so yeah, so those are the headphones. I would say that in terms of audio quality, good, but not amazing audio quality, like it's only a $50 headphone. I feel like they sound really good for $50. Wow, this thing is a monster. It's so, such a big box. I mean, it's 32 inches, right? I have to do this on the floor. It's such a big monitor. Wow, it's, this is really light. Or maybe I've just been lifting weights a lot. <laughs> so there's the power adapter for the monitor cable. So HDMI, display port, and power cable. And this goes on to here. You probably would want to use some kind of flathead. Go ahead and tighten this down a bit. We've got a cable management piece of rubber here. That's kind of nice. This thing is very lightweight. There's like the power adapter port here on the left, a display port, then two HDMIs and a USB-A and a headphone port. In 
and down and wow that snapped right in no problem you just uh you put it together behind it and then there are some slots back here and you just rotate the whole thing it's big oh and it's got an articulating stand man it's like a little tv this is a freaking massive monitor ah uh ha -huh. and hey look at that there we go we can get it to a 144 hertz with this HDMI. You can see it's the Odyssey G51C 32 inch LED QHD FreeSync. And it's got a lot of positive reviews. So FreeSync Premium is enabled. You can turn on a virtual aim point, which is cool. Crosshair for you to, to aim with, which is pretty dang helpful in certain games. And then we can adjust the, the brightness. Oh wow, it just got a lot brighter when I changed the FPS, RTS, RPG. It looks like in custom mode, it was, uh, the brightness was only set at 42%. I'm gonna set a contrast to be 100% as well. So doing a color check on this Samsung G51C, it certainly appears super colorful to my eyes. Keep in mind, my Spider 5 Elite usually underestimates by about 7% compared to a lot of the other checkers out there. 97% of sRGB, so we're above 100% sRGB. 72% Adobe, 73% of the P3 color gamut. And I'll try to rotate this. I like it, you can rotate the screen and raise it up and down. It's articulating screen. A lot of functionality there. Brightness is 342 nits and around 1490 to one for our contrast ratio. And let me see and see what the specifications are on this. So it's 165 Hertz refresh rate, 2560 by 1440p resolution with free sync included. So I think just on paper at $229, this is tremendous value from a monitor perspective, especially buying an official Samsung brand monitor. At $400, I would say it's a little bit of a premium price. But at 229, I think this is a really attractive overall deal. Thank you, Best Buy, for giving us that sponsorship, um, helping support my channel. Links in the description to all of these products that we unboxed and checked out today. I definitely can recommend the G305 mouse. Um, used it now for almost three years on my with my Blade 18, with my Legion Pro 7i or Legion 7i. Um, I use it for gaming, I use it for casual stuff. It's not a super high-end mouse or anything, but it's a nice basic one that I can throw in my backpack and take with me anywhere I go. So that's why I like it. Uh, I'm on the fence about the headphones in terms of like whether I can highly recommend them or not. Uh, need more time with those. And the monitor I'd say is a, is a really good deal at 229. The biggest thing for today, of course, is the review of the Asus Tough. Um, so real quick, let's do an overview of this laptop. This is the Asus Tough A16, 165 Hertz, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That's one of the distinguishing factors here of that makes this one different than the F15, 16 gig of memory at under a thousand bucks and a high quality i think it's a high quality display 165 hertz so activate the force in a ruthless war widely used weapons of mass destruction have devastated most of the earth's environment i mean it's kind of cool some silly cool marketing here is the laptop it's wrapped in a cloth and we've got a uh, a metal top lid i love that opening this sucker up it's got a nice firm hinge got another cloth here let's go ahead and set that to the side here is the power cable let's go ahead and see how long this power cable is so it looks to be about uh, close to six feet just a shy of six feet looks like for the power cable and then we also have the power adapter this has a nice velcro strap for the power cable and it's this higher quality more malleable uh, wrapped cable that Asus usually uses 240 watt power brick from Asus it's a uh, pretty small and compact overall very very lightweight we've got the tough gaming user guide got some overview some basic overview stuff about what's on the laptop there what the IO and ports are safety precautions for your notebook they've got a support number here one 800 4 three three five seven seven eight or bestbuy.com slash geek squad if you buy this through best buy you can get product support for the year of the warranty service directly through best buy um, you can also go to asus.com slash us support looks like we got another little uh manual here you got your warranty registration card you don't have to use this to fill out your warranty you can use the my asus app inside of the laptop 
to, to register your warranty. Okay, so it's time to take this laptop apart. So we're gonna use the iFixit toolkit to uh, take this laptop apart. Looks like all we need is a standard Phillips head screwdriver, uh, a smaller one. So here is the internals. We've got a 90 watt hour battery in here. And given that this has got a Ryzen, you know, low power usage CPU in it, I, this, this battery life in this laptop is probably very good. Uh, I'm guessing over 10 hours of web browsing if it's optimized correctly idling on this could be also exceptionally well so we got this black shroud covering it's got an additional kind of foil covering i'm gonna try to take both of these off let's do a quick overview so we got our speakers on the left and right side uh, and these speakers are like medium size ish speakers not necessarily uh, amazing speaker size uh so but we'll have to see how they sound oh it's interesting that this speaker is not all the way to the edge that might muffle the sound a little bit because it's the the sound's gonna have to basically go straight into the table. So that may not be the best speaker placement, but it looks like they had to do that in order to fit all of these ports over here on the right. We got USB uh, C's here and USB A right here. We've got two SODEM slots right here and right here. Uh, and that's gonna allow us to have upgradable memory. This should have DDR5 4800 included with the RAM sticks here. And we've got another M.2 slot that's right here available for up. That means that this is a 512 gig SSD here. It's got this like aluminum wrapped cover on it. Okay, so it's a Western Digital 512 gig single sided SSD. Uh, and our Wi Fi stick, our Wi Fi is actually underneath this. It's a MediaTek model MT7921. A MediaTek is definitely not a brand that I say is like a high end brand. I prefer Intel Wi Fi cards if possible. They've been working just fine in the laptops that I've been testing. All right, so this. This is, of course, an all AMD system. So we've got the GPU, I believe, is here. CPU over here. Uh, looks like we got VRM heat pipe coverage here. VRM heat pipe coverage up here. And then we've got shared heat pipes two big shared heat pipes going between these two back exhausts. And then we have a dedicated heat pipe over here for the GPU on the left. And notice that we also have some intake foam things to help guide the airflow the way uh, they want to help prevent airflow from coming in over here by these fan exhausts because all the air is going out there. Upgradable RAM, we've got two M.2 slots. We got a 90 watt hour battery. All of that is excellent in terms of upgradability. All right, so. There we go. So here's the whole laptop. Let's go ahead and do a flex test going around the laptop. So uh, just a little bit of flex here, a little bit more up here by the number pad arrow keys area. Very sturdy overall. Um, and this trackpad is a glass uh, trackpad. I like the trackpad. It's very smooth, high quality trackpad. Love that. Very minimal flex. Uh, a little bit of flex up here at the top. Very minimal, but there's some. No, like no flex over here in the top right. The main area of flex is over here by the arrow keys and number pad, but it's minimal all around up down on the keyboard here everything on the keyboard i do this when the laptop's off all the keys on the keyboard so far are feeling good all are going in and out nothing feels loose one thing that's pretty interesting is the status lights on this laptop you can see them it's indicating that we're getting power right now if i press the power button over here notice that it switches to being white and it goes in like this little pattern before the whole laptop turns on which is kind of cool all right so the keyboard lights up with a white backlight and as far as i know it's not changed color on me the tough f15 was a multicolor keyboard and this one has not been changing color we've got our USB-A 3.2. We have the majority of our ports over here on the left side. You can see we've got our power adapter port. This can rotate around. So if it's like this, it'll block your ethernet. If you do it like this, it blocks the fans a little bit. So you gotta kinda gotta pick your poison. You might be able to also just make it kinda go up, I guess. So nothing is blocked, but it uh, depends on how you set it up. Uh, so we got our ethernet port, HDMI 2.1, USB-C, two USB-Cs, and one of these is a USB-4. I'm not sure which one's which. USB-A 3.2 and then our headset port which is a combo port right there okay so that's our port selection overall I kind of wish it had one more USB-A or maybe USB-C perhaps on the other side it would have been a good place and there's no full-size SD card reader which is another downside as far as ports go you can see the laptop's got some nice lines to it right like it's got some good lines to this machine um, and it looks pretty dang good I think I like this uh, kind of high quality 
plastic material. This is the same material. It feels the same. It's like the same material as on like the Scar series or very similar to it. it feels clean. The, it's not too uh, gamery, overly gamery. It's more military, I guess. It's kind of more of a military design. And I like that. I like it overall. On the front here, there are no ports, of course. On the back, we just have our fan exhausts. So we've got fan exhausts on all sides. One on this side, two on the back, and we got one over here on the right side. First impression is not amazing. Like the fact that I cannot read the Lumix right here is not good. You can see there's very little detail on the hair. This is a 720p webcam. It's very grainy all around. And this is with some pretty strong front lighting. I'd say it's a very weak webcam, below average even. Not an amazing webcam, overall very poor and poor color replication. And there is no Windows Hello. So the trackpad here is a nice size. It's a very clean glass trackpad. It feels great on the fingers. Feels exactly like the Scar series trackpads. It feels certainly above average for an $899 laptop. Now the keyboard layout is, it's lit up by a white backlit keyboard. You can control the backlight using FN plus F2 and F3 to raise the brightness and dim the brightness. So you can turn this off if you want to, but it's very businessy anyway. Um, so I'd probably usually keep it on. The backlight looks good. Everything is lit up, even the secondary areas of the, the keys here. Very bright, very vibrant. You can see all the keys. Everything's illuminated better than even the Strix series this year. All of the keys have pretty even backlighting and it's bright, you can easily see it. The functionality here, F1, we got a mute, keyboard brightness down and up, Aura, which is the button to switch the different modes. You can see I can do breathing, we can do strobing, and we can do static. Those are the three options, it's not much. We've got our fan profile button to switch between performance, silent, turbo, or manual. This will usually not get you into manual mode, you have to do that in Armory Crate. Screenshot there, brightness up and down for F7, F8. Monitor button for F9, disable trackpad, put the laptop to sleep, airplane mode, and then we have a full size number pad. And this number pad is, it's got a, a nice layout to this number pad. Even the enter key has a calculator hotkey. Yeah, it's a nice, standard layout for the number pad with large enough keys that you can kind of easily do this from finger memory if you're using a number pad or you used to run, use, if you're used to using a number pad. The arrow keys here have home and page up, page down functionalities built into them. You just press the FN key at the same time and you can get those additional functionality. Good all around keyboard. You know, it's kind of like this uh, membrane-y chiclet style keyboard. It's nice and soft feeling and it's got a nice tr key travel to it. It's not gonna be too loud if you're gonna type on it, even if you're kind of hammering it. You also have a little bit of addition functionality here at the top, volume down and up, mic mute, and Armory Crate launch button up here. So Armory Crate is a application that you can use to control the laptop. All right, so Armory Crate has four different modes down here. You can use Windows, which is the default Windows power profile, but usually inside Armory Crate, you go between silent, performance, turbo, and manual. Manual mode settings will only take effect if uh, you click the save button up here. There is a GPU fan speed option and a CPU fan speed option, but there's only one power limit setting, uh, which is like, I believe a combined power limit for the whole platform or just the CPU. So just the CPU can go to 80 watts and the combined platform can go up to 120 watts for the CPU and GPU put together. Interesting design choice there. You got some stats being displayed in this area. If you go to the right here, we've got GPU mode, which is a little bit important. You've got four different potential modes here. You've got ultimate mode, which is what we're in right now. Standard mode, which allows you to switch between integrated GPU and dedicated GPU. The ultimate mode does not let you do that. Ultimate mode only lets you go into GPU only mode. Basically it's high end GPU mode all the time. Uh, I believe eco mode is just the integrated GPU. In order to go into this mode, you have to go, you have to switch back to standard uh, and then you can access this mode. Right now this is kind of grayed out and optimized is also grayed out. You've got your windows key activation, AC key, touchpad disable enabled, panel power saver, which lets you switch to 60 Hertz refresh rate when you unplug the laptop and AMD smart access graphics. So this is, like a MUX switch, essentially. It says a reboot is required. So this is not the same as Advanced Optimus. This is more like a MUX switch um, requiring a full restart, which is interesting. All right, so we got 97% of sRGB. That's 
excellent. 72% Adobe RGB, 73% of the P3 color gamut. And keep in mind that my color checker is usually about seven to 8% off. So we're really talking about around 80% for Adobe and P3 color gamut here, which is very, very good. And above 100% sRGB for the, the display color gamut. Our NIT's brightness is 293.4. So almost 300, most likely if you were to check around the screen in different areas, you'd find a value over 300, but in the center, 293 nits, 1200 to one contrast ratio. So very good contrast ratio and almost 300 nits with 100% sRGB, which translates to a very good overall display quality for this laptop at the $899 price point. That's very good. I mean, obviously, go it, you know my laptops i prefer if possible to go to 400 nits as a minimum but you know this is an 899 dollars laptop which puts it in a more budget friendly range and this is still very bright and very good all around for a 899 dollars laptop so good job asus uh, you didn't cut the screen quality too too low for the uh to make it applicable to a lot more majority of gamers or whatever out there. So uh, I think this is gonna be an excellent overall image quality. All right, so here's our backlight bleed test. We got just a little bit of backlight bleed in the top up here, a little bit up here. Very minimal backlight bleed on this unit, almost zero. Really good on the backlight bleed front. Yeah, this thing's awesome. The display quality is very rich. Like you look at this display and you think, yeah, I'm not really gonna miss too many colors. Like it's not as vibrant, of course, as a higher color gamut display, but it's still very good. And I think it's very accepted, like very, very good for an $899 price point. This is Dolby Access. You can see it up here in the top left, Dolby Access. Usually dynamic is our best audio mode on Asus laptops, but at least for these types of tests, we could try also this music balance, which is the default. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our uh, audio test. We'll just do dynamic. Let's go ahead and do our baseline level of audio. 43.7 decibels. Let's go ahead and start this. Okay, so uh, not that punchy of bass, not super clear highs and mids. It's distinctly on the cheaper side for these speakers, I think. Okay, faded A on Half-Life. That song, that song definitely suited these speakers better. Peter Spacey Roar is just a very bass heavy song and this laptop does not have that much bass, but the mids and highs sounded pretty decent. I'm gonna be honest. All right, la la la, love you like. I love you like. The vocal clarity is pretty good. The mids and highs are decent and the overall volume is decent. We saw 86.7 decibels on the decibel meter, but I think the clarity could be a lot better. Uh, and the bass is a particular area of weakness on this machine. It's not very punchy. I think overall, I'd probably give these speakers like around a 7.5, which is just a little bit above average. For 899, they're decent. The speakers on the higher end Asus laptops are much louder and have a lot better clarity and more punchy bass and stuff. Definitely more budget-ish on the speakers. So we're gonna be on maximum fans. We're gonna see how loud it gets. And then we're gonna slowly get quieter and quieter and then see how hot it gets and what power limits and all of that we're gonna see. We are pulling. 83 watts for just the GPU, 116 for everything put together. So if you want to know how much the CPU alone is pulling, you minus these two values, I believe, and that's how much the CPU is pulling. So in this scenario, the CPU is pulling about 27 watts. So initial temps so far are looking pretty good. 71 degrees on the GPU, 84 on the CPU. So it looks like our CPU temps are climbing up a little bit. We are at 89 right now, 90 on the CPU. 4.5 gigahertz on that CPU, the Ryzen 7 7735HS. 74 degrees on the GPU now. So we're still not thermal throttling on the CPU or GPU here during manual fans. And we're doing 23.5, 2300 gigahertz uh, or 2300 megahertz, I mean, on the GPU clock speed. So our GPU temp right now, 75 degrees. CPU temp, 92 degrees. 50.9 decibels on max fans? Are you serious? Are we sure we're on max fans right now? That is so quiet for a max fan. We're still not thermal throttling, but this is on the hot side. 
I would agree that this is on the warmer side. It looks like we're going to slowly creep up right to that thermal throttle level. Interesting. Our core temps, none of our, none of our CPU cores are actually close to thermal throttling, only 85 degrees. Right now, on average, I think it's 82. Nothing's above 90 on our max temps. So something else is up there. We can also see that our uh, CPU power right here is only, the core power for the CPU is only doing 24 watts, 23 watts. I guess this is incorrect in terms of its temps. MSI, I'm not sure which number MSI is reading from. I'm not sure exactly why the, that we have such a disparity between the core temps here. I guess this is the packaged power. This might be factoring in everything, all the parts of the CPU, not just the cores. Overall, these temps are warm right out the gate, which is, is not ideal. So we're switching over here to turbo mode now. So total wattage 117, 82 watts over here. We are hitting 95 degrees Celsius now. We, I believe we're thermal throttling now at 90. 95 degrees now that we're not doing max fans anymore. It's usually not preferred to be close to thermal throttling. So just shy of 51 decibels still right now. Let's go ahead and switch it over to performance mode and see what that's like. So you can see that we're doing 95 total watts through the whole system, which means we're only doing like 15 watts to the CPU now. 82 to the GPU, 15 to the CPU. This is a Ryzen chip, so it should still be very power efficient and be able to give us pretty good gaming performance with only 15 watts. At the same time, CPU bound games, you probably wouldn't want to do performance mode because performance mode is going to really limit your CPU performance. 74 degrees on the GPU, 76 on the CPU. So these are good temps now. We've, we finally hit the right balance of temps on this laptop. 47.8 decibels for the fan noise. That is fairly quiet now, and we've hit good temps as well. My guess is that if you're wanting to get the right blend of temps and performance, you probably wanna do manual mode here and set the CPU only load. You could just reduce this down. You could say down, to, let's try 25. Yeah, and this is probably the, if you're gonna go for a high performance mode, just setting the CPU to 25 watts and the overall package power to 100. 120 max. It's going to give the GPU all the room it needs at 92 watts of power. And the CPU just takes five less watts of power, giving us a better blend of temps and performance. So this is probably what you want to do for max performance mode if you want to keep your temps in check. So silent mode should severely reduce the power going through the laptop, while at the same time also reducing the fan noise. 72, 73 for the GPU, CPU right now. Very good temps now on the GPU, CPU. Uh, 62 watts of power to the GPU. 75 watts of power to the total system. So only about 13 watts to the CPU right now. 2.5 gigahertz on the, the, the CPU clock speed, 2.7, 2.2. Really power limiting the GPU and CPU down quite a lot. We went from 2300 megahertz on the GPU clock down to 1800. So that's gonna be 1700 there. So this is probably only like 55, 65% of the total GPU gaming performance being put through the GPU and probably Probably only 40% of the CPU performance. 43.8 decibels is phenomenal. It's very, very quiet. The thing is you are giving up a lot of your performance to go into silent mode, uh, a bit more than I would say is usually ideal. Also, let's go ahead and run Time Spy now. And we're gonna go into manual fan mode. We're gonna raise everything up to max. Initial impressions are good in terms of raw GPU performance. 121 watts going through the system, 4.5 gigahertz here on the CPU, 85 degrees on that CPU. You know, we did see thermal throttling eventually in Time Spy, so we probably would see thermal throttling if we let Time Spy run over and over again, but we probably won't see thermal throttling because um, Time Time Spy is not going to run through multiple loops over and over. 116 watts going through the whole system, 85 watts on the GPU, 70 degrees on the, C the GPU, 86 on the CPU. Let's see if we get up to thermal throttling before the end of this test. 9,232 CPU score, 10,013. So if we were to compare this with some of the RTX 4050 laptops out there, so uh, the Lenovo Legion gaming pad, this is currently on sale for $899, the exact same price as the Tough A16. You know, it's getting $8,400 in time spy. So we're getting almost 800 additional points with Radeon RX 7600S. Now, the big thing, of course, with the RTX 4050 is it does have frame 
frame generation support. So in the games that have frame generation support, it's gonna have a big boost to smoothness and FPS, or at least perceivable FPS. MSI Cyborg with an RTX 4060, this thing only got 7,544. Now this is only a 45 watt RTX 4060, but it's on sale for 799, so even cheaper than the A16. You know, this one is 10,600 for the MSI Bravo 15. It's 999 though. This was on sale, I believe for 899 though, pretty recently. So 10,600 is obviously quite a bit higher than 9,232. Overall, this is competitive in terms of raw GPU performance, at least in this synthetic test. Now we gotta actually do some games. There we go. Okay, so we can see our core clocks. We were starting out doing 4.79 gigahertz. Now they're down to 4.2 gigahertz. Our power going through the CPU, let's pull this up for our, our package power is doing 83 watts. We were maxing at 96 watts going through the CPU. 95 degrees, we have reached thermal throttling almost immediately on the CPU. 13,832, starting out 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz. Our package power doing 81 watts of power. We are thermal throttling again, very quickly. So there's not much of a buildup in terms of our thermal throttle capability, but that's because it's really slamming this CPU really hard and there's only three heat pipes on that CPU. So it's not like there's a ton of thermal headroom. And the fact that we can even do 78 watts of power going through this system is pretty good. 13,947 for our second run. 87 watts of power there initially, pulling 4.2 gigahertz across all all eight cores. This is an eight core 16 thread CPU if you are not aware of that. Overall, this is good CPU performance for an $899 machine. I mean, we're averaging 4.16 gigahertz on these things, but they run hot. Almost all of the Ryzen CPUs run hot. And I, and I personally attribute that to their very small architecture that's usually, it's either four or five or six nano, nanometers, depending on which CPU it is. Um, and that's just smaller than Intel's and that results in a smaller CPU die for the heat sink to go to. So it just dis dissipates the heat less quickly than Intel. And Intel is just better at dissipating the heat because the you can put a bigger heat pad on there, which lets it you know, dissipate the heat, transfer heat better. It's just like laws of thermodynamics basically um, at that point, I believe. Okay, so we got 4.13 gigahertz, 95 degrees Celsius and averaged 74.5 watts of power through the CPU during this 10 minutes Cinebench R23 run. Let's see what we get overall, 13,941. That's obviously good. Good for an $899 laptop, not bad at all. Okay, so 1900 by 1200 resolution. We're currently on high settings. Wow. Wow. All right, 170 FPS right out the gate, 150 FPS now. A little bit of frame time stuttering there, you see that? You really don't want that when you're aiming down sight. I think this display is pretty dang good in terms of its responsiveness. There's just a tiny bit of ghosting to it. Like if I move the screen real fast, you can kind of see it, but it's not bad. And if I go ahead and switch it over to low settings, now we're on low settings, 232 right now. Yeah, that's some really good frame rate in Apex Legends. 228, 191, easily maxing this uh, 165 hertz fresh rate at 1920 by 1200, wow. Okay, so we were hitting 95 degrees uh, on the CPU nonstop, 71 on the GPU. So it's really slamming that GPU. You know, we're getting a little bit of stutters here and there. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. I'm gonna toss a grenade down there. So 215 FPS in gameplay, but we are getting these little stutters here and there. A bit of stuttering there with the smoke. Overall, wow, really great performance in Apex Legends and it felt great. Minimal ghosting on the display. You're gonna be able to play esports on this pretty dang well. So 1920 by 1200, 165 Hertz refresh rate. We're gonna do uh, minimum settings. AMD FSR set to quality. Definitely getting some big load-in stutters. 
there. Right now we're getting a lot of load in stutters. Look at all these frame time load ins. Like this is, this is real time stuttering right here. Look at everything loading in. Super interesting. I think it's gonna get all loaded in and then it'll be good. But every time I turn the mouse a little bit, it's like, okay, gotta load everything else in. So recently Warzone 2 did this whole optimization thing where everything is all messed up. Oh, this guy's gonna kill me. Uh, <laughs> super stuttery for some reason. Shaders were not optimized again. Like I let the shaders optimize this morning and now shaders are not optimized. That's probably why we're stuttering. 80 something FPS now as we're flying in over everything. So, and everything's not, nothing stuttering anymore. Everything seems to be running really well right now. Let's go ahead and do our test. 84 FPS, 55 for our 1% lows. That is actually really good. This is better than most of the RTX 4050 laptops that we've tested recently. Some of those only got like 60 FPS. Some of them got like 90, so it just depends. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna totally kill you. We're gonna get you, you're mine. Okay, 98 FPS, 52 for our 1% low. First time testing Doom Eternal. This is gonna be fun. So currently at 16 by 10, 19, 20 by 1200, adaptive vertical sync, motion blur is on, ray tracing is enabled. Quality is on ultra nightmare, which is the highest, highest setting. So even on ultra nightmare with ray tracing on, we're still getting playable frame rates. Yeah, this is definitely a game where I would want more FPS. Then 50, try turning off ray tracing. This is so much better. Oh God, we're about to die though. But yeah, 130 FPS. It's it's very playable. Doom Eternal is awesome. Playing, playing really, really well. We're at 1920 by 1200. We have uh, FSR set to quality. Let's go to our graphics. We're on ultra settings. Okay, so once again, quite a few load in stutters, interesting. But we're seeing some pretty dang good FPS here and there. There's a lot of little stuttering going on, you know, like, but it seems like it's smoothed out now that we're loaded into the environment. All right, so here goes our, our test. 62 FPS off this initial run. No reduction to our 1% lows almost. Oh, as we go to a new environment area, more stutters. Interesting. What did you find? Tracks. Not you, though. I'll keep looking. Wow, so 64 with one per seven for our 1% lows. Oh my God, that's so low for our 1% lows. I'll bet you if we did it again though, it would be much better at 1% lows. I think it's probably a driver optimization issue if I were to guess. We, we, we have enough RAM right now. We're only using 10 gigs of RAM. We're only using six out of the eight gigs of VRAM. We did the second test, 6558 with our second test. So it's like once all the environment is loaded in, it's good, but I bet if we were to keep going, we'd probably run into more stutters. Yeah, but they're too round. Could yeah, more, some more stutters. You see the frame time stutters there? Oh. So obviously extremely good FPS. That's in the same ballpark as an RTX 4060. Uh, so full screen is enabled. We're doing a ray tracing on ultra. Super resolution to quality. We'll apply that. Only 27 FPS, 11 for our 1% low. You're not gonna be able to do ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077, at least at these settings. This is definitely not gonna be very ideal playable frame rates. I mean, theoretically you could play a 20, it's like at the bare, bare, bare minimum, but it's like, this is not good. The first thing you'd probably want to do is just turn off ray tracing, uh, maybe set things to high. Notice our VRAM is being capped at eight gigs. We're hitting that eight gig cap. Our CPU temps are still spicy over 90. 29.3 FPS. If we go to high, DLSS on quality, 86 right now, much better FPS here on high. With Once you turn off ray tracing, we're getting good playable frame rates now 93 fps 77 for our one percent low excellent one percent lows 90 fps 65 for our one percent lows very nice let's go back and get into a little fight here super smooth play uh, gameplay right now Okay, so 93 FPS, 77 for a 1% low. Excellent all around gameplay. If you wanted to try maxing your FPS, if we go down to the low settings with quality on FSR. Shit, 
Let's see what we got. 125 on low settings, all right? And the game does look uh, a bit smoother now. Cyberpunk is certainly gonna be playable, but it's not gonna be playable at max settings, where an RTX 4050 with frame gen is gonna be able to play at ray, at ray tracing enabled and everything. So we are in 1920 by 1200 resolution, but we're running uh, FSR2 on quality mode. V-Sync is off, frame rate is uncapped. Everything's on ultra with low textures and ray tracing is enabled. So this is the same exact settings that we usually run. This is no frame generation support. All of the frames here being generated are real frames. So obviously some really hefty 1% low stutters going on here. 40 FPS right now. So the game is playable with everything maxed out. Notice that our uh, VRAM is 7.4 gigs utilized, even though we're on low textures. Wow, that was a big stutter there. Here's our official benchmark run starting at 45 FPS. It's gonna go down lower than that, I think, but um, yeah. So certainly playable, but the first thing you'd probably want to turn off would be ray tracing. And once again, once you turn off ray tracing, I think the whole game would probably jump an FPS over 60. 3720. 3720 for our FPS counts here. A good amount of stuttering. Our temps are pretty high, very CPU bound with all the NPCs here and all the textures. We might be running into VRAM limitations, even though we're on low textures, it's crazy. The uh, the key here, turning off ray tracing. We are getting much improved FPS. Wow, turning off ray tracing really bumps the FPS. So just using standard shadowing, now we've got a playable game. Uh, big stutter there, but generally speaking, the vast majority of numbers here are quite good. 65, 36, 37. Turning off ray tracing, boom, playable. Notice that we're getting quite a bit of like loading stutters once again. I wonder if this is just gonna be a consistent pattern with this GPU. Okay, so our display and graphics settings, we're gonna go to 1920 by 1200. Well, all right, so DLSS is on quality. Graphics is on qu uh, ultra. 4336 so far. I want percent lows kind of had a bit of stuttering when we were going to the new area there again more little stutters going to a new area wow we're hitting 57 fps now averaging 48 22 for our one percent lows wait it says dlss on quality what how is dlss on quality right now this is a Radeon GP. What the heck? What is what is ultra performance? I don't think that setting is even making a difference. Okay, so we're gonna set it to FSR2 quality. There we go. Now we're getting some upscaling. Look at that, up to 80 FPS now. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a lot better. All right, so we're gonna do our walkthrough test. Here we go. Okay, so 6550, very playable. You know, the RTX 4050 in this mode is not much different. We're gonna be on ultra settings, except we're gonna set textures down to medium so that we don't stutter. 1920 by 1200, upscaling mode is going to be FSR2 on quality. Okay, so wow, 81 FPS with a nice steady frame time graph. Please not right now, I do not have the energy for this. Let's go ahead and try switching to uh, performance mode. So we're in performance mode now and the fan noise is obviously gonna go way down. All right, our temps are now 76, 79 because we're power, it's power limit throttling our temps much lower now. The fans are also quiet. And uh, switching it to performance mode did not really impact our FPS too much. But we're still getting well above 60 FPS with good 1% lows and our temps are better. Let's try going to silent mode. So silent mode, reducing our watts down from 120. So max fan mode was giving 120 total watts. Performance mode was doing 100 watts. We dropped 20 watts in performance mode and now silent mode gone to one set, uh, going down to just 75 total watts. But look at our performance. It's still good. You know, we're still doing above 60 FPS in silent mode and this laptop is super quiet and our temps are still really good. And I think that's one of the very important things to keep in mind with this uh, laptop is that, uh, you know, max fans mode is really not required. That'll bump a lot of the temperatures up for no reason really. And if you were to just play the game on silent or performance mode, you're still gonna get very good FPS and much better temps and quieter fans all at the same time. <laughs> Jimmy, just... Jimmy, I am warning you. 
a great acoustic experience. And even though the speakers on this laptop are not very good, it can go really quiet and still put out good FPS. High quality ray tracing. FSR2 is on set to quality. Okay, so 48, 49 FPS. So we are playing high quality ray tracing enabled and we are getting playable frame rates. It's in the playable range at 44. 46 for our median FPS, 27 for our min. This 1% low is obviously not good. Dying Light 2, playable on ultra settings with ray tracing, but just barely. It's on the edge of playability. If we were to turn off ray tracing, obviously massive gain to the FPS, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a consistent theme with this laptop. It's just, you're gonna need to turn off ray tracing a large portion of the time. And if, as long as you're willing to do that, then this laptop is gonna be awesome. 80, 102, quite nice. So yeah, like this is a game where, again, you just turn off ray tracing, bam, great FPS. 106 FPS when you turn off ray tracing. So more than double. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, let's go. Highest settings with ray tracing enabled, exclusive full screen, Intel XCS, I guess. It's FSR must not be supported, so we'll use Intel XESS for scaling. I don't know. Okay, so we are getting some 1% low stutters. Look at that frame time graph, getting more stut stutters there. It seems to be mellowing out now though. The, once the uh, once the environment again is loaded in, like we're running into these environmental load in stutters. That's probably the biggest flaw so far that we've seen with the laptop. So notice again, we're getting frame time stutters uh, as we load into a new environment. It seems to be a pretty consistent pattern getting these frame time stutters as we load into environments. I wonder if there's a solution to fix that because that's a pretty big deal that makes the laptop a little bit harder to recommend if, if you're getting a lot of those load in stutters. We got one, one stutter, two stutter, but it's looking good now. And our FPS is actually in the playable range here at 45. 52 FPS is still in the playable range with ray tracing enabled, but an action title like this, I would shoot for 90 FPS, uh, which I'm pretty sure you'd be able to get that. I'll just, I won't do the whole benchmark, but let's just go ahead and turn off ray tracing. Okay, so we were getting like 40 FPS in the scene. Now we're doing 65, 70. You're probably gonna get like 65, 75 FPS now with ray tracing off. That's a pretty big gain, almost a 50% increase to FPS. So uh, ray tracing on ultra, FSR, on quality only 29 fps there's almost no point to doing this test because i already know we need to turn off ray tracing so i'm going to go ahead and just do this test with ray tracing disabled so we're going to flip ray tracing off and now we're 60 fps let's go 80 fps there Turning off ray tracing jumps us from 28, 29 FPS all the way to 75 FPS. Holy moly. You know, that's the thing though. In a game like this, if you did go with an RTX 4050, because it has frame generation support, and you set it to these settings with no ray tracing, you're probably gonna be over 100 FPS in the same scenario. You gotta pick your poison, what do you want? Let's talk pros, cons, all of that shenanigans for this laptop. So comparing this $899 laptop against most other $899 laptops, Laptops. This thing's got great CPU performance. It's got good, raw, like great raw GPU performance, more raw performance than an RTX 4050. But if you plan on using frame generation and playing games that have frame generation support, the RTX 4050 has a big advantage in those titles specifically, like, like probably like 50% more FPS type of advantage, like a big advantage. But in the games that do not have frame generation support, this one will probably be like 10 or 15% faster than a 4050, I think. We need to do a side by side side actual detailed testing comparison. I still have my Nitro 5 with a 4050. That'd be a good matchup for this. I also have an Omen 16 4050. I could do that one too. I don't know. We'll see. The quality control of this laptop was excellent. No issues with the keyboard, the trackpad, the ports, the display. All of it is running great. Feels great. Minimal flex in this laptop. Very rigid. Good build quality. The, um, the ports on this are high quality. You have a USB 4, two USB C's. One of those is a USB 4, one's a 3.2. And then you have two USB A's. You have an HDMI 2.1, an ethernet port, no SD card slot of any kind. And I wish there was another USB port, maybe a mini display port. So the ports on this are like, okay, but they're not amazing. The high quality ports for the ports you do have though. The webcam quality was certainly below average, not very good. And no windows hello on here is a little bit disappointing. The keyboard feels good, has good backlighting and 
it has a nice layout and good functionality. The touchpad is a glass touchpad and feels great to use, uh, very high end for a $900 laptop. Speakers on this were mediocre. I think I got like a 7.5 out of 10 and it's loud enough to enjoy some AAA games because the fan noise can get quite quiet and still have good FPS. So it's still possible to use like acoustically friendly audio with minimal fan noise. Uh, and we did test the fan noise. It was basically like 44 decibels in a 43 decibel room. So barely audible at all in silent mode. And obviously in that scenario, the, the speakers are good enough to actually put out decent-ish audio. If you're just sitting there in front of the laptop, it'll be a decent experience for you, but not necessarily amazing because the speaker quality is just not that loud or not that clear, not that bassy, but it's still going to be a decent experience. Like not a bad one. fan noise on max fans also was not that loud at 51 decibels. In terms of thermals, we saw much better temperatures in performance and silent mode because it limited the power watts on the total system down from 120 down to 100. And at 100 watts, it was able to keep the temperatures in check at 120 watts. Even with max fans, the temperatures went all the way to thermal throttle on the CPU, which is a little bit pointing that it can't handle that. AMD and Asus know that this goes to 95 watts. They're not afraid of it breaking on you, but typically speaking, a lot of people prefer to power limit throttle rather than thermal throttle. Cinemage R23, we got right around 14,000 in our 10 minute test, which is very good for an $899 laptop. Time Spy, we got 9.2 thousand, 9,200 something, which is better than any RTX 4050 we have tested so far, which typically test in the like seven to eight and a half thousand. Better raw GPU performance in this laptop than any RTX 4050 we've seen so far. Apex Legends had very little ghosting, like very good overall esports performance with this laptop display, but it's not necessarily like the best esports display because it's not 240 Hertz. And like I said, there is just a tiny bit of ghosting from a slightly increased uh, screen response delay to the display. Very minimal though. And I think most players would be able to play esports games really well on this machine, especially for a $900 price point. Once again, it's rare to get a display that's a super fast response rate at this price point. Very good esports gaming machine. If you need a basic esports gaming machine, $900, this is a great option. And, and that's partially because frame generation does not help or support esports gaming because e uh, frame generation causes input lag. So no competitive games will ever implement frame generation technology into the game itself. But for AAA games like Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts, those games support frame generation. And if you had a 4050 laptop, you would get way more FPS in those titles specifically. But other games like God of War, we saw more FPS with this laptop than with an RTX 4050 which is surprising. But the moment we turned off ray tracing in all of these titles, the FPS skyrocketed to extremely playable, very good frame rates with real FPS raw rendered frames. There's no AI generated frames since there's no frame gen. Basically 300 nits, 297 nits brightness with 100% sRGB, about 80% of the Adobe and P3 color gamut. So this is a far above average display quality for a $900 price tag. So if you're after a good display, then this is a laptop that I would prioritize over some of the RTX 4050 machines that have a weaker display qualities at $900. That's uh, that's obviously one of the greatest strengths of this laptop. Another great strength of this laptop is just the rigid build quality, the high quality trackpad, the great keyboard um, and number pad, those and, and the good quality ports. You know, some of these other budget laptops have a lot more flex to the laptop, have a lot more bendiness, they have plastic track pads, and they have much worse quality displays. So there are some real advantages and some really good things about this laptop, but it's not all gravy train, mainly because Nvidia pulled frame generation out of the hat. Okay, that's like that's like the, the biggest thing that makes you go like, well, maybe I should just get a 4050. And if you can get all the other features that this laptop has, but in a laptop that has, you know, like you can get like the high quality display, trackpad, keyboard, mouse, all that, but also get a 4050, then that might be a real draw for a lot of people out there. I think this laptop will fit a lot of gamers out there, like especially competitive or esports gamers that are looking for a good laptop at a reasonable price. I think this laptop makes a lot of sense. I think that covers everything about the laptop. Certainly not my number one recommended laptop at $900, but it's good. It's a good laptop for $900. Yeah, that's it for this live stream. I hope you found it helpful. I will see you in the next one.